Alrighty. So I've got a multi-level converter here, um, which you could use for uh, a grid tied situation where you want to generate uh, 11 kV tie in from, uh, or 3.3 kV tie in from uh, 415 volt. Or you could use it for a uh, wind turbine situation, or you could use it for maybe uh, electric traction for uh, uh, electric locomotive, for example. Although it wouldn't necessarily be a, a grid tie then. Um, you could probably use it in a number of other situations, uh, charging electric truck, that sort of thing. Um, there is no specific application in mind. It's just. Uh, something I put together because it's interesting. So the simulation is all done in, in LT Spice and it's very behavioral. I haven't pinned down lots of the, the actual circuit elements. It's uh, just the overall architecture and the scheme. I also haven't bothered too much about the waveform shape. As you can see uh, this is the output waveform and it's very much a triangle not a sine wave but um, it's easily modified. If you uh, if you wanted to, so the the overall architecture is a cascaded H bridge, which we'll have a look at, um, and then we'll have a look at how we actually generate some of the floating power supplies that you need, um, because the cascaded H bridge multi-level is not like a diode clamped where you you get to generate some of the power supplies along the way. Um, you have to provide them or you can avoid providing them, but if you wanted to deliver a significant amount of power, it's quite common to have to provide floating power supplies. So uh, let's have a look at the overall scheme anyway. So I've got here uh, a block, which is, uh, which is this, which is quite ugly. But it's just a H-bridge. Um, it's got some idealized switches. Um, so the only reason I've used these is because uh, it saves LT having to solve uh, Nonlinear equations. Save nonlinear equations. Uh, solve nonlinear equations, which uh, which in turn takes time. It shortens the time steps a lot. And it uh, increases the computational effort. I've also got some catching diodes. These are uh, out of the LT Spice box of magic. Um, it's probably uh, a shocky barrier by the looks of things. Um, it's not selected based on any particular parameters, it's selected because it was the, the first one that looked plausible in the list um, and it's, it's fine in that regard. And it's trying to save a switch which is unblow up, so no big deal. Uh, I've got a little bit of dead time just to, to uh, avoid any shoot through appearing in the simulation results. Um, and this requires a model card which is, which is that there which says uh, more than half a volt turned on, effectively. Um, and it's got some... I could actually make iron a bit smaller, couldn't I? But anyway. Righty, so that's what's there, and you just copy and paste that a number of times. OL is output left, which is the left leg centre. OR is output right, which is the right leg centre. VS plus and VS minus are the uh, DC link, effectively. Um, and this is... Uh, in quotes, gate drive, although there isn't very much actual gate driving to be done, just ones and zeros. Let's get rid of that. So we just copy and paste that a number of times. If you were running off a three phase setup, um, I guess you might decide that you wanted to have a, a multiple of three number of uh, multi level stages. The reason being that you'll provide. Uh, each one of these floating power supplies somehow. So you probably want to have an, the same number of floating power supplies running off each of the three phases. So having a number that is divisible by three of final stages in your multi-level convert inverter is probably desirable, but in this case there is no three phase, it's just um, just some uh, some DC sources in, uh, in SPICE. So the, the trick is that there's only one ground and it's here and the left leg of the 
lowest is to the right leg of the next and the left leg of that is to the right leg of the one above and, and so on and so forth all the way up to the up to the top and then back down here and all the way up there as well um, and then the, the load resistor which in this case is just a pure resistance is between the the spare leg of the topmost one which is its left and the spare leg of the lowermost one which is its right all we need to do then is set up some pulse timings uh, to actually switch the switches and figure out how we're going to generate the, the floating supplies if you look in the literature you can find that there are methods to remove these supplies and use capacitors and sort of pump charge in them um, you can do that depending on how much energy you intend to so how throughput your system or what the energy throughput of your system is um, you may find the capacitors have to be absolutely enormous and having a, a dedicated floating supply is, is more desirable it depends on the application um, so the spacing for the, the pulses is 62.5 microseconds uh, which is 1 16th of uh, of 1 over 500 Hertz uh, which is how we end up with our 1 16th or 1 30 second it's 1 16th of 1 of 1 over 1 kilohertz um, which is from, from there to there and then, then back down to get the other half so this actually is running at 500 Hertz as well so maybe this is a aerospace uh, grid tied in birth yeah that doesn't really work you can set the frequency however you like um, within reason. I mean, the higher the frequency the more the switching losses so don't go crazy. Um, obviously if it was tied it would either be 50 Hertz or 60 Hertz. Um, maybe it's on a, a ship or something and that's why it's 400 Hertz. Who knows. Um, and if we, in, this is the power and the load, don't forget the load's just made up. Uh, if we integrate then about 6 kilowatts through so that has to be supplied across all of these floating supplies. So how would you go about generating them? Chances are a full bridge converter. Why? Because you already have a full bridge converter. 16 of them in fact. Um, so you can take your full bridge converter from here and just use it. And each of these has 600 volts in and you rectify the three phase probably. So you've got 600 volts or they're about 560. Um, so you can just use the same thing again. It's a good deal of reuse going on. The major difference is unlike up here, we can get our output waveform shape without any magnetic components at all. It, if you don't like the granularity of the staircase or the shape of the sign, if you made it into a sign, um, you could do some filtering and uh, some sort of LC arrangement would be, would be fine, probably with some car mode aspects too. But, the mains doesn't look that nice anyway. I don't think it would be the end of the world if you had a few little staircasey bits in. If you were driving something that was inductive anyway, like a machine, not that you would, but just suppose, then that would do a significant amount of, of uh, filtering of the shape. So, you probably don't need to worry too much, but maybe. Depends who's watching. If you've got somebody watching your power quality then, then maybe you want to do something about it. Anyway, so this buck converter, oh, it's, it's a full bridge converter secretly, but it's 600 in 600 out, so I'm going to call it a buck converter. Oh, it's nearly 600 out. All it is is the same H bridge circuit as before. Uh, run off 600 volts. We've got some uh, gate drive stuff, which is, of course, uh, not real gate drives. And then we've got uh, one magnetic here. So we've got uh, primary and four secondaries, uh, all set up as a transformer. This is um, switching at 100 kilohertz, by the way, which is an arbitrary choice. If you make the frequency higher, you can get a smaller magnetic, but you'll get bigger switching losses. Um, take your pick. The, uh, the output here is AC because we've switched, uh, so this is a square wave input. Um, so there'll, there'll probably be some ringing here, and you can solve that by putting some other catching on here, um, and maybe running an auxiliary auxiliary buck if you need to. But if these diodes are nice and fast, you probably don't need to do that. 
Um, and then we have the smoothing cap and our load, which is actually not the right resistance for the other the other circuit, but it doesn't matter. It's just a just an example. So this is fairly straightforward, and you could probably buy this um, commercial off the shelf if you needed to. And if you're in a three-phase system, um, you would probably rectify your three phase either as delta and have three of these all in parallel running off of your rectified three phase or if you wanted to you could rectify the, the three phase in star have three outputs of a lower value uh, would be 320 in the UK which is 230 times root 2 um, and then you could have a number of outputs per phase um, as long as you've got the same number of outputs per phase then you should have a reasonable balance in your in your power system. Um, of course, if you did have three phases and you use this circuit as is, you'd only get 12 outputs, but you need 16 outputs for, for here, so some adjustment would be required there. Either increasing the uh, inductance of the secondaries to boost this voltage slightly um, and have less, sta less stages. Here you could only have 12. Alternatively, 16 here and 3 and 4 would be fine, so you'd be alright with that if you added, I don't know, you work it out, it's only adding up for God's sake. So this is quite an easy piece of magnetic design to do. Um, if you decided to, to go a different way in generating very high voltages, you can end up putting magnetics in some funny places and giving yourself a big headache which is why I'm quite keen on this method so okay we've still got 600 volts DC which I pulled from the air uh, you have to imagine a bit of circuitry goes here because I'm too lazy to, to draw it out um, we have a three phase in or a single phase in up to you um, with a, one of these H-bridge, big fan of the H-bridge. We need an inductor, um, which will be our PFC inductor, so we'd have to have a second magnetic. Um, and obviously if, you, if you've got three phases, then you'll have to have three PFC inductors, I guess. Um, would you? Yeah, you would. And your H-bridge, and you've got a little microcontroller, which is watching the zero crossing of your... Uh, current volt and voltage waveforms and it acts to run the switching in such a way that the loading of the entire system forces the current that it draws in line with the voltage and that's that's how you do your active PFC. If you need to see that being worked, um, if you go to my channel and look up Simulink videos, there is a Simulink uh, single phase to three phase uh, converter where the single phase has active PFC and the three phase is running an induction machine um, and it's a dual loop uh, PI controller which is uh, performing the active PFC and that works quite nicely you could implement that in a in a fairly mid-level uh, processor with a floating point and it would be no problem you could do a fixed point if you needed to um, something like a Cortex M3 or 4 or a, a C2000 shouldn't have any trouble with that. Um, righty, so that's how you get from your, your 415 3 phase through to your 11 kV tie in or 3.3 or kV tie in or whatever it happens to be that you want to work on um, with a minimum, or as far as I can see, a minimum number of magnetic components. Righty, now if you've got any questions about uh, matrix converters, Diaclamp multi-level, Cascade H-bridge multi-level, uh, their applications in uh, electric vehicles or in power systems, then um, feel free to drop me an email or send me a message. All best.